Choir presents The Wages of Grace, a novel, written by Brandon Dragon, narrated by Edison McDaniels. He could taste salt on his tongue as the waves broke around him, whether the gentle flavor lingered because of the misty spray or the tender touch of her lips, he could not be sure. He sat wrapped in a wool blanket, the sun bright through hazy clouds, the ocean pulsing in perfect rhythm. His feet planted in the cold, wet sand, he had never been more happy. She floated effortlessly over the waves, as far as the moon and as close as his heartbeat. Her soft, rosy lips nearly touched his ear as he gently bit his bottom lip. She softly whispered his name. Her beauty was ravishing, and she didn't even know it. Delicate strands of perfect ash-brown hair fell smoothly on her bare, freckled shoulders. He would have tied a millstone around his neck and plunged himself into the sea for just one more kiss. In the next instant, there were rocks below, jagged and sharp. He stood forty feet above on the edge of the precipice, while the rough sea crashed spectacularly against the boulders below. Birds picked ruthlessly at the carcasses of dead fish, unwilling to leave them mercifully to their eternal rest. The tips of the rocks gleamed in the gray sunlight, the raging sea roaring against them deafeningly. He closed his eyes and imagined flinging himself toward them, but he knew from previous experience that he would only wake again in his bed, dejected but unharmed. He recoiled in surprise when he heard his name again. He looked up and saw her in the distance, flowing white dress whipping in the wind. She stood erect at sea, his very own Venus beckoning him. Tears streamed down his wind-beaten face as he stretched his arms toward her, but the distance between them was impassable. His old muscles cramped with longing, longing for just one more touch, one more embrace, one more tender word. The rain began to fall heavily, as it always did, and the wind began to howl, as he was certain it would, and he knew that once more he had to say goodbye. Too great, however, was the disquiet of his soul to utter mere words. Slowly, silently, she began to sink. He watched for the thousandth time in horror, unable to intervene. He also knew that she would return the following night and that the aching in his soul would never dissipate, would never relent. It has been said that time heals all wounds, but this is untrue. Some wounds only turn gangrenous with time. There was unremitting sorrow in the subconscious nightly ritual, but there was also the numbing consolation that, at least he had seen her again, in all her glory. His eyelids fluttered rapidly in the dark as his mind's eye watched her calmly submerge in the black, foaming sea. He told her that he loved her, and that was all. She sank to her waist, her breasts, her neck, her nose, and her eyes without panic, without struggle or fear. Then he could see her no more. Her name was hope.